So, and um, welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us from different countries around the world. Um, my name is Kelsey Lee and I'm Managing Director of Syncoherent. And um, today we're very lucky to have Dr. Shayla with us. Um, she is very popular with um, over 15 years um, in this industry. Um, and um, so today's topic is um, hair removal and hair removal treatments and technologies. Um, please note that um, this session will be recorded and the link will be shared with you if Dr. Shella gives the permission afterwards. And no confidential information shall be shared within this, step in, in this webinar. All speakers express their personal views and opinions. This is not necessarily the official Syncoherent opinion. And um, please make sure all of the participants in mute mode while the lecture is on, um, there will be question and answer time after Dr. Shella finishes um, her lecture. And um, so now, let me see, we have two minutes to go <laughs> um, until, um, until we um, have Dr. Shella Stas. Um, while we wait for other participants joining us, um, let me see. And um, do you have anything um, to, to remind us, Dr. Shayla? Uh, you have um, you you have your mic of um, you you have the mic in mute. Yes, I was actually uh, waiting uh, for everyone to join so I can uh, just start with the lecture. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I think I can see a lot of participants already. They have joined, so we would like to welcome them as well. So yes. Give another like two to three minutes and then we will start. Okay. We have um yeah, we have more and more participants joining us. Um and um so while we are waiting, um hi Dr. Um Cicada. And have Pigeon, Chris, <clears throat> okay. We have another minute to go. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Um, we have Dr. Rana, and we have um, so. How many participants have already joined, Kelsey? Until now, um, we have. We have we have about twenty participants joining us um, in this seminar so far, and um, um, and I, I think since it's time uh, we should start. Do you want me to start? Um, yeah, I think we should start um, since it's ten. I mean, it's the time already. Uh, we have. Um, many participants waiting online already. Um, thanks for being on time. Um, since this is the um, first webinar we're having um, in terms of hair removal treatments and technologies, um, we're very excited to have Dr. Shella. And um, yeah, I think we should um, proceed to you, Dr. Shella. Okay, thank you so much, Kelsey. Um... So first of all, I would like to 
Thank you, Kelsey, the whole team, Sinpuran, and uh, you know um, everyone who's joined me in the Zoom meeting for joining us, for uh, giving me an opportunity to talk about the lasers and the new technologies um, we are using these days. So I can see um, a lot of participants already they have joined. So I would really like to welcome them for my lecture. First of all, I would like to introduce you myself. I am uh, a medical doctor who have like more than like 15 to 16 years of experience in aesthetics and lasers, doing uh, the laser procedures and anti-aging procedures in my home country. And uh, I am a member of American Academy of Aesthetic Medicine and Surgery of New York as well. So um, today I would like to talk about the technologies which we use for the hair removal. So basically uh, the main topic would be definitely the lasers, but I would like to tell you uh, the other technologies previously, which you know the doctors and the other people were using. So let's start the lecture. I would like everyone to mute their mic and just give uh, a little like uh, a concentration on the lecture. So I think we should proceed. So this, I'm just going to try to give you the first introduction, what we are going to just um, learn in this lecture. It is the introduction, it's about the skin, how we classify it. Basically, there are a lot of classification available in the market for the skin. It's basically the color. And we will talk about hair, definitely we are uh, doing the hair removal, so definitely what is the medium which we are going to work? So that is the hair. Then it's growth phase. Then the hair removal methods. And then the laser types. So I would like to share the screen so you can see the lecture. I hope everyone can see. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. Um, maybe have it on full screen. Yeah. Yes, good. Thank you. So this is the first, uh, just a little bit introduction I've already um, given. And this is the main topics we are going to discuss today. So again, I welcome all the one who are joining now. So basically it's the introduction is like, yes. So we are going to do the classification of the skin. We will talk about the hair, its anatomy, its growth phases, what hair removal methods we are using. Then we will just talk about the laser hair removal technologies, the different kind of lasers we are using, what are basically the laser types, how does it work, its physics, the main lasers and the IPL technology we are using. And then we will, in the end, we will just do a little bit of comparison between the different lasers so you can understand what is the difference between the different types. So you, it will be really easy for you, all of you to select. So as all of you know that, you know, you skin is the largest organ of our body and it covers like the surface area is like 1.5 to 2 meters square. And its weight is around like 18% of our total body weight. 
And it has like different layers. The top layer is the epidermis on which we target our laser. But epidermis is like 0.3 to 1.5 millimeter. Then the second layer is we call collectively dermis. That is 1.5 to 2.5 millimeter square. And in that dermis, we have the hypodermis, subcutaneous, and fat layer. So to, collectively, the dermis is like 2.5 to 4 mm. So it's really important to understand the skin first because, you know, uh, in IPO, your targeted area where you're going to just apply the lens, the laser lens, is the skin. So as you can see in my slide, it's the top layer, the epidermis, this one, and then this is the dermis, that is 1.5 to 2 mm. Then this is like the subcutaneous layer. So you can see the hair follicle, it's just deep rooted inside, it's in the dermis. So whatever we are just using the laser, the skin is involved, and deep-rooted dermis is involved. So this is the classification of the skin. It just tells you the color of the skin. It starts from type one to type six. Type one is light color, pale or white. In the sunlight or in the exposure with the sun, it always burns, never tans. Type two is white. Fair, usually burns, tans with a difficulty. And type three is medium or white to olive. It's sometimes, you know, mild burn gradually tans to olive. Why it's important to, uh, to have an idea about the classification of the skin is really important because, you know, uh, you have to select the energy according to it. So type four, just, yes, type four is the olive tone. It rarely burns, tan with ease to moderate for us. Ta type five is the light brown and uh, type six is the dark brown. Yes, so we have talked about the skin, its classification. Now we will just see what is basically a hair follicle. It usually originates in the epidermis. So that is the top layer, which is 0.5 to 1.5 mm. And the follicles on the scalp, eyebrow, and eyelashes, they extend to the epidermis, dermis, or hypodermis. It varies from patient to patient or client to client. Then we will talk about the hair anatomy. As you can see in the slide, sorry, yes. As you can see in the slide, that this is the skin surface. This is basically the outer part of the hair. And this is the bottom, that is the follicle or the bulb or the papilla, which we really are going to target when we are just going to uh, do the treatment. So basically the hair contains like surface, follicle, bulb, papilla, sebaceous gland, sebum and hair erector muscle where the hair is joined and then the function, it, what does the hair do? It just regulates the body temperature. Okay, now it's really important to understand the hair growth. You know, once you are doing the laser hair removal, you call the patient like whenever uh, after like three weeks or a four week time, 
to understand that you do need to, um, you know, you need to understand the phases of the hair growth as well. Basically, like there are three phases, anagen phase, catagen phase, the telogen phase. Anagen phase is the proliferation phase. New hair grows in this phase and hair follicle is growing a new hair shaft. Length of this phase is like two to six years. Like, but in this anagen, anagen phase, the hair, hair grows basically. And you have to call the patient an anagen phase. Catagen phase is the transition or the regression phase. It is the shortest of all three phases and lasts only a few weeks. Telogen is the, you know, the resting phase and shedding of hair, hence new hair grows in anagen phase. Length of the hair follicle is four to seven mm. So previously, what uh, were the methods we can do like spa treatments. Spa treatment, they do the, you know, the threading, waxing kind of things. Then in uh, the initial technology was the electrolysis. They were using the electrolysis method. The first, uh, the first kind of technology we came across was the IPL. That was intense pulse light. And then the lasers. So we'll come about the laser hair removal. So laser hair removal. First of all, what does laser stands for? It's light amplification stimulated emission radiation. It, for any of the laser to target, we need a medium. So that we call it a chromophore. For hair removal, laser hair removal, we need a melanin. And the hair contains a melanin. That's why it's like a dark color, the black color or the brown color. That is the pigment inside the hair. So we need to target that. And the technologies used are intense pulse light that we call is IPL. Diode, that is the most common, uh, you know, you must have hair like Soprano or the uh, Alma lasers, Alexandrite, very common ND YAG laser. Most common but because it is like very safe for the dark skin and the dark hairs as well. So it really works well and on uh, great for skin as well. So, and the Ruby lasers, but right now, you know, most of the lasers are the top one, the IPL diode, Alexandrite and the ND YAG laser. So you can see there's a one slide in which they have shown the method that how we are going to do the laser hair removal. So it just we just apply the gel and we are doing it. So you can see a slide where there's before and after is shown. So this slide is really important in which we can see the energy. It's just going down and targeting the root that is the bulb papilla. You see the, the third slide. So These are the laser properties. How does it work? It's monochromatic, it's single range of wavelength color, collimated, travels in a straight single direction. It, did, it do not disperse. Coherent means all the waves are in just straight one line direction. It's one wave moving together at the same time. So wavelengths for the any of the medium, any of the laser to work, we need a wavelength for a diode. It is like 808 to 810 nanometers. For NDAG, it is 1064 to 1340 nanometer. Alexandrite is 755 nanometer. IPL is 420 to 1200 nanometer. 
we use like different kind of filters in IPL to work uh, because IPL is a multitasking or multifunctional um, uh, equipment or the technology or the machine. So it has a different uh, filters if we are targeting for the hair removal or for the acne, for the pigmentation, we need to change the filters accordingly. But a few of the new, uh, you know, the new technologies in the market, they in that we don't need to change the filters. They have like inbuilt system, they automatically change it. So this was the wavelength of the different lasers. You see in the first slide, uh, there's a picture that there is a light bulb. This one, and this is the lens, how the light is dispersed. So it's most like the widespread kind of light in the intense pulse light. In the laser, it is more focused, more targeted. So this is the lens or the skin. So basically, um, now we talk about the laser physics, how it is, you know, for a laser to work, we need a flash lens, the power source from the where the energy will come, we need electricity or another laser medium that is KTP and DAG. Laser mediums are uh, different for the gas if you're using the CO2 laser, the argon laser, the krypton laser. We use, if we are using the liquid, uh, the pulse dye laser, rhodamine, curamine, fluorescein, and the solid is the KTP, GAG, and Ruby. So today we are just talking about the IPL. So the power source, source is the flash lamp. And in the laser medium, we are talking uh, for the uh, YAG, so that would be solid. Optical resonators are the mirrors and the cylinders. Delivery system is the optical fiber and the handpiece. So the energy is basically delivered from the handpiece. Important terms we need to, to see is the wavelength. That is the what I which, uh, what I told you before. It is for the diode. It is eight to eight to eight to ten. That is distance between the peaks of a wave. Energy is the basically the jow. It's it comes in the joules. It's a number of photons influence energy delivered per unit area. In that particular any area, we call it affluence. And then power or the watts, it depends on the, you know, we just uh, see how much watt is the machine, how much the power it can give. That is the rate of the energy delivered. Pulse duration, duration to de deliver energy. So it is in between the two, uh, the laser shots. So let's talk about the IPL first. So it is basically the intense pulse light mechanism. It uh, How does it work? It is a broad bandwidth of uh, light wavelengths. It uses like flash lamp as earlier I told you that it is a power source is the, basically a flash lamp. And it has like a different series of filters through which we work. It is very cost-effective machine and uh, multi-purpose treatment we can do. Like if we are just selecting only one machine, we can have like, we can do a lot of treatment with it, like laser hair removal, acne, superficial vessels, pigmentary disorders, toning, photo damage. Uh, the good thing about the IPL is that if the patient or the client comes after the sunburn or uh, he or she has visited the beach, so the other lasers won't work, we can just uh, remove the photo damage with it as well. So it can be used in combination, like uh, for some clients, if, if they have like different kind of uh, hairs, um, the darker hair or the lighter hair, so we can just uh, uh, in, use in combination with the technology like NDAG and Alexandrite and the IPL for the better results. Because sometimes, you know, uh, if you're using the best of the technologies, some patients are not getting the results, so we can use the combination. It is suitable for light to medium skin tones, 
because uh, there is a little bit chance of uh, just burning of the top layer that is the epidermis with the IPL. And um, it is suitable for natural blonde to dark brown or black hair and not effective on blonde, red, gray, or white hair. And you have to remember that on uh, the white hair, um, no laser can work. So ultimately we have to go for the electrolysis and on the blonde hairs or the fine hairs, we can use the alexandrite. So how to do the treatment? Basically, first we will just uh, shave that area. We need to have the root, so it should be properly shaved, not tweezed, not uh, waxed. And then we will just apply a laser gel on the target area. We can do a whole body, but definitely with the IPL, it's a little bit slow treatment. So um, we will prefer the diode or the ND YAG one. And uh, the basic sessions are six to eight. And then after six to eight sessions, we will require the maintenance sessions. And the uh, gap depends, like initially if the patient comes to you and they have already taken a lot of sessions, you can see, you can call them like uh, whenever the, they're the hairs or uh, in the initial time, two to four weeks gap between the session, depending on the strategy of the doctors, how they want to proceed with that. Efficacy depends upon the hair color and the type. Like if you're just targeting uh, the IPL on the lighter hair color, def definitely it, will, it won't give you that much result. It's really good on the darker hair, on the thicker hairs. So after six to eight sessions, maintenance sessions are required. So we can just call them up to like two months or three months to maintain the result. End point is once we are done, start the treatment and we can just see um, a little bit of the redness, we call it erythma or edema on the epidermis. And um, it's a little bit time consuming because uh, it's, little bit slow treatment and it's less effective on body yet it has a quicker effects on the face contraindication definitely uh, is pregnancy lactating mother children under 12 to 13 years definitely the above teen it's preferable to just call them for the laser hair removal as you can see um, this is the picture which I've just uh, tried to show you that is the IPL device. It has two hand pieces, one for the hair removal and one for the other treatments that is the acne treatment, the pigmentation, the toning and the superficial vessels. Now comes the diode. Diode is the most common. You must have heard like the Alma or the Soprano one and its wavelength is 808 to 810 nanometers. That is the best wavelength, exactly where the root hair follicle is, and it is suitable for all skin types. So it can be like the treatment of choice or the, um, you know, the laser of choice, because, you know, you can target any kind of hair or you can target any kind of skin. It is safe, it is effective for even the lighter and the darker skin tones. So uh, if you are in any country doing the treatment for different kind of skin tones, so it is really effective. And uh, it uses photothermolysis to target specific chromophores in the skin and chromophore is the melanin definitely. And it has, very superior power of absorbing the melanin and it offers deepest penetration better than the IPL and its wavelength penetrates more deeply into the skin. It reduces amount of energy absorbed by the epidermis. That was the point which earlier I was trying to tell that why the skin we need to understand because you know, um, that is the first part to come in contact. So if the, all the energy is absorbed on the skin, so you will have a lot of burns and, uh, you know, the, the energy is then not absorbed 
directly through the hair follicle to the root. So um, the diode's energy, the absorption level is really good. And uh, it uses like semiconductor technology to produce coherent. So I told you in the beginning, the monochromatic and the uh, uh, second one and the third, the coherent one. So it, it, is, um, it uses the coherent method for the projection of light. It uses light beam with narrow spectrum to target chroma force in the skin. How we do it, it's pretty much the same. If we shave the area, we apply the cooling gel and uh, it heats the selected chromophores and leaves the surrounding tissue unharmed. And the melanin, of course, melanin is the hair, the hair, the darker the hair, they have the, the melanin pigment. So that is a chromophore, it is targeted. And uh, it has like uh, complemented with the cooling technology, it has like the contact contact cooling because we need some uh, basically the laser it has a heat so we need some method to cool down the skin as well or to provide you know the cooling effect of the skin it's like uh, six to eight sessions are required redness and swelling you can observe after the treatment endpoint is again the perifollicular arrhythma or edema and uh, later we should avoid scrubbing, exfoliation, direct exposure to the sunlight. These are the points we should uh, you know, make sure after the treatment that uh, we should take care. So the third uh, laser type which we use is the NDAG long pulse laser and we can use it alone and we can use it in combination with the Alexandrite. If we are using it like the simple NDAG long pulse, it's really great, uh, good for all, all skin types, but especially good for the darker skin, darker hairs. And uh, if we see if we are just uh, in the European country or if we are in America, we are just having a white, uh, you know, the grade one or two skin, and the color of the hair is blonde or they're fair. So I, NDAG is the best technology to use. And the mechanism is like, NDAG is basically neodymium, doped yttrium, aluminum garnet. And it is used alone or in combination with Alexandrite. It is solid state laser. And it just, uh, the wavelength is 1064 nanometer. And there are other diode as well, which has like uh, 940 nanometer, 1440 nanometer, 1120 nanometer, and 1320 nanometer wavelength. And it is a gold standard for skin types four till six and can be used on the tan skin. So that is a really plus point. So what we will do, we will just uh, shave the particular area, no need to just apply the gel and post the treatment, we will just apply the sunblock. Six to eight sessions again are required, then the maintenance sessions and gap of three to four weeks between each session. If you're just doing the IPL treatment alone um, or the uh, diode, um, you can even call the patient after like two weeks to three weeks, but in uh, NDAG, we definitely have to give them like a four weeks time. The energy is more, the absorption is more, the depth is more. So we need to just give a little bit of gap between like three to four weeks. Results vary from patient to patient. Some, you know, uh, patients come and they say, we have a beautiful results with IPL. And a few of them, they, they say we even don't, we are not getting any kind of results with the NDAG long pulse as well. So it just depends on patient to patient. And uh, when to end the treatment, it is a peri when you just give a shot and you can see a perifollicular arrhythma or edema, that is a redness kind of thing, you, uh, that is the end point. So benefits of NDAG long pulse, it's the deepest penetration, air cooling, we use a uh, separate um, 
Zimmer device or the air cooling device. Uh, and then it is like it has a superior results, definitely comparative to the other technology like IPL. But they are the studies have shown that they have like a very similar results uh, with the diode one. Few patients prefer treatment without use of gel. Some say it's like we don't want to use the gel, so so it doesn't feel easy. So they can prefer that number of sessions are definitely less because of the depth and the, the energy it is absorbed. It is like quick and the fast, the doctor uh, is also, you know, happy just to finish the treatment quickly. So this is the basically, uh, I have actually made the comparison between the three technologies we use. So it's really, you know, for you people to understand um, if you are the initial buyers or uh, you have just started the practice, what to uh, exactly, which equipment you should go for and which technology will really help you in your setup. So this is like IPL, diode and NDN. So IPL is pretty much very economical, less price. Diode is again like economical to slightly costly depending on which company you are just use choosing to buy a laser and ND YAG definitely it is a slightly costly laser and um, the skin def light to medium skin for the IPL diode is really good for light medium and dark skin so that's an edge ND YAG is really great for the dark skin so it's really great for the olive skin or the, you know, the subcontinent type of skins, the grade four, five, six. And then um, it can, the IPL can target the thick, coarse dark hair and the diode is normal to thick dark hairs. And uh, for NDAG, thin, thick, light hairs, you know, that is like, again, a plus point that, uh, with the alexandrite, we can target the thin hair as well. We can target the light hair as well. We can target the thick hair as well. So that's again an edge point. And then 50 to 60% of hair reduction we can see in IPL. Diode is like 96% of hair reduction. NDAG, 94% of the hair reduction. So, um, you know, the diode bottom, better hair reduction results. IPL is basically a multifunction. So you can do the laser hair removal, you can do the acne, you can do the pigmentation, you can do photo damage, you can do the laser toning. Definitely we won't be able to get the, that superior results we are you getting with the Q-switch or any other laser for the pigmentation or the toning, but still it really, it, it helps in uh, lightening the skin as well. So uh, diode only do the laser hair removal and NDAG, it has the, it do the laser hair removal only, but it, the, the one with the alexandrite, it's really, it has a genesis mode that is a toning of the skin and it really helps in the removing the fungus of the nails that is the, uh, in the fingers, the toe, uh, it's really helpful in that. So on the minimum, like uh, IPL, we need like six to 12 sessions, six to eight sessions for the diode and six to eight sessions for the NDAG long pulse. IPL is like time consuming. It's like kind of a slow treatment. And uh, for doctor, it's like, uh, you know, the smaller areas are preferred for the body. It becomes the really time taking. Diode, it's really quick and fast. It's very similar with the NDAG. Um, when we come to the body, uh, IPL has a little bit low results on the body and uh, in the, with the diode and the NDAG long pulse, it shows good results or the great results. IPL is basically a low maintenance. It only has a flash lamp. It's not as I told you, it's, it's not as costly. And, uh, you know, um, it's a low maintenance kind of uh, equipment or the machine. Diode is low to moderate maintenance. NDAG is definitely, uh, you know, the 
definitely a superior technology and uh, it has a moderate kind of maintenance. Filters change, we need filters to change for every treatment. In diode, we don't use any filter. In NDAG, we don't use any filter. Then there's like, um, please can you um, mute your uh, mic? Then the gel is required in IPL. Gel is again required for the diode and for NDEAG long pearls. We don't use any kind of gel. Shaving is required for all three. And in the first two IPL and the diode, we have the contact cooling system. But for the NDEAG long pearls, it just, I told you the air cooling, that is the cooling system attached. Some uh, of the technologies they have kind of contact cooling as well. So, if you are a beginner or a doctor and you have just uh, started your practice, uh, the factors to consider prior to buy a laser hair removal, that's really important because once you know, uh, if you're a distributor, all machines fits for all, but, um, and the salesperson, it's again a really uh, different kind of thing, but for a doctor, they have to see um, are they a beginner or a specialist means have they enough, they, do they have the enough experience of uh, doing the lasers, of operating it? Can they handle the technical one? So they need to consider are they the beginner or the specialist? Ultimately, you know, being a doctor, you need all kind of technologies or all kind of devices at the clinic. But at the beginner level, you can just see if they, you don't have the enough uh, money and you don't are you not trained um, you know enough to um, just uh, operate on a technical laser so you you can start with the IPL or the diode it is really cost effective uh, you know you have to see how much you want to spend then you can decide which technology or which uh, you know the method or the technology or the machine you're going to just buy or keep at your practice. And it should be result oriented. It doesn't mean that like you don't have like, uh, you're just having something and it's not giving you the results, your patients are not happy. So there is no point. Then you can see that if you are a beginner and you don't have like, uh, you know, that much revenue to spend on, you can just start with the IPL that is a multifunction or the multipurpose one. So, but if you're looking for, if I'm just want to do, I'm, I want to be the specialist in that particular treatment, then you have to just specifically design, uh, you know, the technology or the machine to operate. Like if for the hair, laser hair removal, you really need a diode or the NDEAG one. And then again, you have to see what exactly your clinic needs, how, what kind of uh, patients comes at your clinic and how the patients, how much the patients are satisfied. And then after all, definitely you can upgrade your machines anytime. These are uh, a few of the, I think, Syncoherence devices. That is the IPL one and this is a diode. So, so basically, they have the NDAG long pulse and the Alexandrite as well. So that was my lecture for today. I actually tried to design my lecture for everyone so they can easily understand so I have to just, uh, you know, the focus on the technology, the latest technology, so they can easily select the technology, what they should buy and what they should look for. So I'm, I'm done, I'm finished, my, uh, I'm finished with my lecture. I really thank you all for everyone who have joined us.
and uh, I can just, uh, I'm available here right now I, for your question and answer sessions. So if you have any questions in your mind, so you can please ask them. If you will ask my experience about, I because, you know, I'm the, I'm the only kind of doctor right now in, in the Pakistan's practice who have used almost like the three technologies of uh, different countries. You know, it's just like I have used the American devices as well, the Korean devices as well, and a very good Chinese devices as well. So a comparison uh, I can easily make that, um, you know, I, I was really happy with the diode results. I am satisfied with the IPL as well. I am really satisfied with the NDA long pulse Alexandrite because I incorporate like three technologies for any kind of patient. If I if any of my patients are not getting results, I can just give them the combinations and uh, just to give them the best results. Thank you. <laughs> so I I like to give my mic to Kelsey so uh, if she can ask if they yes. any of the participants have any question yeah i have a question um i bought the the, uh, the nd already so i need to do um i need to know how many treatments uh, can i do in one day please can you repeat your question yeah how many treatments can I do in one day? For different patients? Yeah, different patients. Which which the, machine are which machine are you talking? The ND. ND YAG? Okay. Yes. So you mean if you're doing you can do as many clients, you can give a gap between the treatment for just, you know, if you're just doing the phase, it's just like a five to ten minutes treatment. So you can give a like uh, 10 to 15 minutes gap between the two patients and then okay. you can go on with it. So it doesn't mean that like you can do, do only 10 treatments a day or 15 treatments a day. So it's not it's not like that. Okay. Is, but uh, if you're just doing the body, definitely you will just give a like a rest for the 10 to 15 minutes and then you can do another patient. Oh, okay. That's, that's my question. How, how long I need to wait? for the next patient? For the next patient to take, it's just 15 minutes gap. That resting okay. period, that would be 15 minutes. Like you have done four or five clients or four or five patients, then you just can give them 10 to 15 minutes rest. Just have a coffee or a tea break, something like that, and come again and do it. Because they are okay. really, you know, stable uh, equipment. They're not like that. If you just want, you do one treatment and it's it's getting hot. No, it's not like that. Okay. Thank you. Most welcome. Anyone else? Uh, Dr. Shela? Yes. Uh, we have someone on the um. We have someone in this webinar asking, "Can you use diet HR on African American people?" That's one of the questions they posted. Okay, African American skin would be classification would be definitely five and six. The safest treatment, uh, we can just do it with the NDAG long pulse alone. But if they don't have it at, in their practice and they have the diode in their practice, they can keep the lower energy and they can do it safely, but not with the high energy. So they, they need to keep it in mind that they have to use the lower energy. And they won't repeat the treatment. They won't call the uh, patient after like two weeks. They definitely have to give them a gap of four weeks in between the two treatments. Um, okay. Thank you, Dr. Shella. And um, uh, we have Dr. Saleh asking, 
Um, Dr. Saleh, you can actually um, have your microphone on and asking Dr. Shella. Um, in case you're not available to talk, um, I'll repeat your questions. So Dr. Uh, Shella is asking, are there chances of par um, paradoxical um, hyper cross with diode? Hypertrichosis? I, uh, ma'am, I wanted to ask yes. about the paradoxical hypertrichosis. Can we get it with diode as well or not? No, yeah, it's just a condition. We don't come across so commonly. It's just like after like uh, 100 to 200 patient, one, one patient. Like in my 16 years, 15 years of practice, I haven't come across these kind of things. But sometimes, you know, once in a blue moon, some patients can uh, have it but they can have it with any technology. Can you hear it, Dr. Um, Saleh? Yes, thank you so much, ma'am. Okay, thanks. And, um, Actually, yeah. I try to prepare my lecture very precise. So even if I'm just telling them or just try reading it, so the information is exactly to the point. So once you will go through again my lecture, you will understand exactly what kind of, you know, the technology is made for. You know, they, it will be really easy for them that... Um, what kind of technology they should select for what type of hair and how they should proceed with that. Okay. Uh, hi, ma'am. Uh, Hello. Hello, how are you, ma'am? Yeah, I'm um, uh, Maybe get this uh, presentation or uh, any recording of this slide. Yes, I think you were recording. Uh, yes. Yes, uh, we, we, we do have this um, presentation uh, recording and um, with Dr. Shela's permission, uh, we will have this recording um, get, it, get it sent out to, um, to the participants. Okay, okay, thank you so uh, much. I think we we'll have- We'll be waiting um, for this. Oh, nice. Okay, not a problem. Do you have questions, um, Kiran? I see you're waving. Please uh, ask Kiran to unmute her mic. Okay. Uh, we have um, oh, some questions. Uh, like uh, if a patient have uh, multiple types of hair, thick hair or thin hair, so, uh, can we combine two treatments, two lasers at a time? Uh, for example, if we can, uh, we do diode and uh, NDA or electron right. Can we do it at the same time? No, not the same day. You have not to be not uh, one technology one time and the other technology the next time. So the next sitting. So that is like one technology in the in the one sitting and then. Uh, other technology in the next sitting. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Hello? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, it's me, Kiran Khan. Uh, yes. you, yeah. If you can hear yes. me, I can ask my question. I'm Kiran Khan from UK, and I just need to ask how long the handset's life, because after a certain short, you have to change the handset. So I just need to ask how long it can last long the handset. So how many short in one handset? Do you it understand? all depends. Like uh, the, it uh, differs from company to company, and you know, yeah. uh, mostly some have like ten million shots uh, mm -hmm. in each side in the ND act. It, it just uh, goes a long way. Yeah, they, they many can patients you can do like like two to three years, four years. You don't need to change in the diode and in the 
IPL in the diode. Yeah. Yeah, in the diode, you need to change the, the hand. Piece. It's like 10 million shots, I think it, but it varies from company to company. So you have to see yeah. which, uh, you know, from where you're buying, how many shots uh, they're saying. Zing, many zing, yeah. of the companies these days, these day, they are claiming that it's like the shots are unlimited. But basically, uh, are they just uh, giving you the guarantee for the energy? Is it going to be stable or is for very long time? So that is a big question to to see. Another question: After a like uh, after two three years, like they, they go strength is go less or still the same? strength of the handset is still the same when we're using lots of uh, short so after like 10,000 or 1 million shorts the strength is going less or they staying the same of the handset it all depends how many patients you have done how many shots you have used if you have not used it much definitely mm -hmm. it, it's it's there you know you can use it for a very long time but you need definitely you need a maintenance you know, yeah, you need to course. just uh, um, replace the water on timely. If we need a service, uh, yeah, if we need a service, so we are in UK and we buy from the China. So who's going to do the service? Uh, believe me, the, um, uh, the, the IPL and diode, they are so user friendly. They are so doctors friendly. They don't need much maintenance because, you know, you they have a very specific two or three kind of things, you know, the water kind of thing which we need mm. to just change like after um, three or four month time just to replace even uh, that's my personal experience. I, I As earlier, I told you that I'm kind of a doctor who has uh, all kind of machines from different countries in my setup. And I'm really happy enjoying the Chinese uh, um, uh, machines and technology. Machine. You know, equally good because, you know, yeah. uh, I heard a lot of things um, that uh, they are not good, they, you will require that much. You know, even if I don't have some kind of a maintenance person here to help me out, mm -hmm. but I haven't uh, faced any kind of problem. Uh, just a little Actually, bit of, you know, uh, mm -hmm. it all depends. Um, the, the electricity should be proper. Yes, the, the, the person who's operating on the laser, that's really, mm -hmm. you know, a main person. Because that person knows how to operate a machine, so I don't think so uh, yes. anything could happen. Actually, in uh, UK, there is a for the insurance purposes, we have to have the services every two to three years for the machine, IPL laser. If we claim to the uh, insurance people, they ask us, uh, when did you have a last time your uh, maintenance of the machine? So they, they need. That's why we're asking this question, because in UK, for the insurance purposes, they ask you, when did you last time have your uh, machine services? So they ask this question, insurance people. So I that's hope, why it's quite uh, I hope from, from wherever you're just buying, uh, they will mm -hmm. definitely, uh, you know, uh, be able to answer you how they will be giving you the maintenance for uh, that. But I, yeah. as I told you, that like NDI, Glompus, and Alexandroid, Alex that is a very technical, uh, you know, mm. machine or the equipment. But uh, diode and IPL is really user friendly. Yeah, yeah, because I'm using IPL from last fifteen years. I have a machine as well, and I'm using in UK from last fifteen years. But maybe I'm thinking about to use another new one, diode one, maybe. But I'm yeah, already definitely using. Definitely, you should. You should. Uh, uh, switch to diode because you will be more happier to use it because it's like the treatment is very fast so not time taking and definitely you will get a better results because it's a, it's proper a laser it's a laser ipl is a light treatment laser yeah. you will have a better absorption the better depth target and uh, you know you will have a superior results Thank you so much. Thank you. It's really, uh, I really appreciate because quite knowledgeable as well. Because I already I know lots of things, but it's quite good to just Thank see all. Thank you so much. This. If you, I, I'm, I'm so happy that all of you have enjoyed my lecture, and yeah, it's uh, quite knowledgeable. really liked it's quite... it. Thank you so much. Thanks my pleasure. Lot. Is anyone else who want to ask any question if they have in their mind? Yeah.
Uh, we have, um, thanks. Thanks so much for um, everyone joining us. And uh, we have five minutes to go um, for this um, uh, webinar. And um, I see on the backstage, we have one last question asking what should be watts of diode to buy 1200 watts or 1600 watts from Rabia. Um, do you have any suggestions on that, Dr. Sheila? Uh, um, so that is basically the speed. The, it, it would really affect the speed. Um, uh, heavier machine is uh, really definitely, it would be good. It would really affect the speed of the treatment. So she can buy like 1200 to 1600 watt machines. So that's a good one. Okay. The most important um, factor to keep in mind is to buy from a very reputable company. That is really matter. You know, if you will buy a machine from the open market, despite it's like they claim like it's like 2000 watt or 25 or 3000 watt doesn't matter, but you have to be, uh, you know, to buy the equipment from a good company and uh, it's better to have an FDA for that equipment as well. So you will be in better hands later on. You will have better results because being a doctor, it's really important that you give the best to your patients. So that's why, you know, they will come again and again. Okay. okay. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Shela. And um, also thank you everyone for joining us today. And um, we're, Really grateful how you keep learning and keep on updating the services and treatments to your clients. And I think that's um, very lucky for our clients and for us as well. And um, also, um, so as a summary, um, Dr. Shella gave us a great lecture, but which is very informative um, in terms of um, the skin and the hair and also different technologies um, in to, to treat hair removal treatments. Um, and also great suggestions on factors to consider um, prior to buying a laser hair removal machine. And I think um, this is also very helpful um, for all of us. And I, I hope you learned a lot. Um, also one last thing, um, um, both all of the um, technologies and devices Dr. Shella introduced us um, today are both FDA and CE certified. Uh, so they are very trusted and reliable equipment. Um, and also um, in um, Europe, UAE, United States, and also other countries, uh, we have the, um, the um, um, customer support uh, manager looking after us uh, for both training and also the um, um, the technical services. Um, also, this is um, one of the very first, but not the last uh, webinars we will be um, having for all of our great clients. And please do get back to, to us. Um, after this webinar, um, you'll um, your your thoughts or your feedback, um, suggestions, topics you'd like to hear from us next time. And um, this is very, very helpful for us. And um, I'm sure it's very helpful for all of our, our other clients out there as well. Um, so we have um, come into the finishing time. Thank you so much, everyone, today. And um, we will see you next time. Thanks so much, Dr. Shela. Thank you so much, Kelsey. Thank you so much, all the participants. Uh, I, 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 who you. have just uh, joined my lecture, I would really like to appreciate uh, for all of you who have joined the lecture, who are part of it. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.